Hi, I'm Elet Mizrahi, and in this video I will give a five minutes overview of my work with the VivZoar evaluating a locust attack on the Lightning Network. I invite you to watch the full version of the video on our YouTube channel. As you probably know, the Nakamoto consensus suffers from a scalability problem, and the Lightning Network is thought to be the most promising solution to this problem. In our work, we leverage a known limitation of payment channels to form different attacks on the Lightning Network. We evaluate the effectiveness and cost of these attacks and suggest different mitigations that will make it difficult to carry them out. In the Lightning Network, when a user wants to transfer money to another, it picks a route between them and opens a payment request through that route. The request has a validity period in which it stays open and waits for approval or rejection. Our attack is based on the fact that the payment can remain open for a long time, up to two weeks, and that there is a limit on the number of concurrent unresolved requests that can pass through a channel at the same time. Therefore, an attacker can connect to the network and initiate many small concurrent payment requests along the same route. It will keep the payments open until the last moment and then cancel them. In the meantime, all channels along the route will have exhausted their maximum capacity of requests and therefore will be blocked for new payments. The network utilizes on-in routing allowing the attacker to act with impunity. Our results show that it is possible to disrupt the Lightning Network by locking most of its liquidity, spending less than half a Bitcoin. It is difficult to prevent this attack since the vulnerability arises from fundamental properties of the network. One of them is that payments are executed using conditional payment contracts in the form of HTLCs in order to be trustless. Each time a payment is forwarded through the channel, the transaction gets bigger and bigger. Since transactions might eventually reach the blockchain when closing a channel, the limit on a block size limits the transaction size, which eventually limits the number of concurrent open payments in the channel. In our work, we explore three modes of attack. The first attempts to block as many high liquidity channels as possible. The second aims to disconnect as many pairs of nodes as it can, and the third concentrates on isolating a specific node from the rest of the network. Due to ethical concerns, we did not attack the live network. Instead, we simulated these attacks based on the actual network topology using snapshots of the network taking over several months. We evaluate the cost of each attack and discuss it more in detail in the paper itself. I'll present a small part of our results. This graph shows the fraction of pairs separated in the network as a function of the number of channels opened by the attacker. For example, we see that using only 32 attacker channels, we disconnect nearly a quarter of the pairs in the network. The main cost of the attack is opening channels. This can be explained by the next graph, which presents the cost of attacking the network's liquidity, blocking channels for at least three days. There are two types of costs. The blue refers to the cost of opening channels by the attacker. These amounts are non-refundable. The orange is the amounts locked in channels in order to relay the payments. These amounts are returned to the attacker at the end of the attack. Note that once channels are established, the attack may be repeated again and again with no additional cost at all. Additional results, such as evaluation of the attack over time and the costs of isolating single nodes from the rest of the network, including attacks on prominent nodes in the network, can be found in our paper. We discussed several mitigation techniques that make the attack harder to carry out. The first one gives us a way to disconnect misbehaving nodes from the network, preventing them from repeating the attack many times at no cost. In the second, we rely on the network being highly connected and suggest to lower the maximum allowed route length. This will increase the cost of the attack. And finally, we also suggest nodes to configure the number of maximum concurrent payments they allow to a channel according to the trust level they have with their peer and to stop allowing back and forth on channels. Our paper also includes statistics on several aspects of the network and proof of concept experiments that we did on a local test network to demonstrate the attack. Thanks for listening. The full version video and link to the paper are attached in the video description. Feel free to email us if you have any thoughts or comments.